Hello, I am Dr. Jack, and today we are continuing our video series on the details of the cannabis plant and in particular CBD. For the purpose of today's video, we are mainly concentrating on how does CBD work inside of your body. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Let's just jump right into it. Hello again, I am Dr. Jack, and if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. And if you are new here, the purpose of this entire video series has been to educate about the cannabis plant and in particular CBD, since that is what's being researched the absolute most at this time. I'll put a link down below if you want to go through. I suggest starting and watching the videos in a particular order so that you get the maximum benefit out of this entire educational series. And if you do like what you see in here, a early hitting the like button as well as subscribing so that you know when future content will drop is greatly appreciated and would really help out the channel. And so for today, we will be talking about how CBD works inside of your body. And we cannot talk about that without getting into the nitty gritty of the endocannabinoid system. So we'll start by talking a little bit about the history as well as dive into the details of what it is, how it works, and kind of go from there. So let's start off by talking a little bit about the history of the endocannabinoid system. It was mainly in the 1980s and 90s that it was being heavily researched. It was the Reagan administration which heavily funded it and it was mainly due to the war on drugs, if you will, and he wanted to show the dangers of the cannabis plant on the human body. And ironically, it had sort of the opposite effect. With all that funding and all that research, they started discovering all sorts of things about the endocannabinoid system, all of which we will be covering today. So what is the endocannabinoid system? What is the definition? It's basically the foundation of how cannabinoids interact with our body to maintain our health and wellness. And it is quite possibly the most important system when it comes to doing so. The National Institute of Health, or the NIH, has actually been quoted in saying that the endocannabinoid system could have therapeutic potential in almost all human conditions. To put it another way, it is our body's own cannabis system that interacts with essentially every other system in your body. And what do I mean by every other system? I'm talking about things like your cardiovascular system, your pulmonary system, your endocrine system, immune system, gastrointestinal system, urinary, the list goes on. And one way to think about it is that it is essentially this. It is the Elmer's glue of your body. It, what it does is it basically holds, it is the glue that holds together all the other systems and helps cross talk and everything else. And you understand a little bit more about what I'm talking about as this lecture goes on. And by the way, this was not a video sponsored by Elmer's glue. It's great glue, I highly suggest it, but there's no sponsorship here, all right? One of the issues with the endocannabinoid system that I have is the fact that only the last time I checked about 11% of medical schools teach about the endocannabinoid system. Yeah, people like Dr. Ethan Russo, who's a neurologist and who has come out and has been quoted in saying that there are more cannabinoid receptors inside of the brain than there are neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters are basically the chemical substance that's used for nerves to talk to one another. You know, with all of the importance that we're finding amongst the system and how it cross talks with every other system. I think it's a real shame that the new medical students that are coming out are not getting trained to at least learn about it because if you don't learn about it then there will there will be a lack of research into the area and for something this important I think it was crucial to teach our younger generation of scientists and doctors about this system. You know, if you approach different medical schools and things like that, a lot of it is that the medical programs are just so jam-packed with information. Um, when I was in medical school, <laughs> quite some time ago now, um, you know, there was already so much to learn and so many important things to learn. And so with so much being discovered about the human body, about, you know, just everything, pharmacology, physiology, uh, it's just, you know, trying to figure out where to squeeze it in. However, I think a lot of it has to do with the stigma surrounding the cannabis plant. And obviously that stigma starts from a place of just lack of understanding and lack of information. And honestly, that is a huge reason why I wanted to start this whole educational series was because I found that a lot of scientists, medical professionals, just people in general, just you know, out in society, 
have a really big misunderstanding about the cannabis plant and truly the lack of understanding of the differences between marijuana and hemp. I've gone off totally on a tangent, I'm sorry, but I figured that was important to say. And so what makes up the endocannabinoid systems? Let's break it down into its separate part. On the one hand, you have things that make the cannabinoids, and these are called enzymes. So the, there are enzymes that make the cannabinoids, the endocannabinoids, and that is, endo just means your body's own, so your body's own cannabinoids. So you have enzymes that make it, and ones that break it down. And then you have your body's own endocannabinoids. The two most common ones that we know a lot of are, uh, the first one is n arachidonoethanol amine, or better known as AEA. And yes, that is a real word, and yes, it's a very long word, but not as long as supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. And for those of you who don't know, that's from Mary Poppins, great movie. Uh, the old one and the new one. The other endocannabinoid is 2-arachidonoyl glycerol, or better known as 2-AG. And both of these were discovered by Raphael Meshulam and his scientific team in his lab around the early 1990s. And lastly, you have the receptors, which is what the endocannabinoids bind to on the cell surface. And the most common receptors that are studied are known as CB1 and CB2. Uh, CBD actually doesn't bind very well to those, but it acts through a ton of other pathways to influence indirectly the CB1 and CB2 receptors. When it binds to those receptors, it basically causes this cascade uh, that leads to a desired outcome that is ideal for your body. The reality of all this is that it is a lot more complicated than what I just told you, and this slide demonstrates it. So as you can see, it's so complicated, there are actually symposiums titled Cannabis is Complicated. We can just kind of briefly go over this slide, but I thought it was important to bring this up so that you have a better understanding of how exactly all of this works and the complexity of it. CBD modulates or changes other non-cannabinoid receptors, and it actually binds weakly to the CB1, CB2, as I mentioned. It modulates or changes that one receptor and therefore it reduces the high of THC, if you will. That's why it's known as the buzzkill of marijuana. As I mentioned in my previous talks, this is one of the things as to why you're really talking about complete opposite things when you're comparing um, CBD to THC from the marijuana plant. CBD also activates the serotonin receptor and helps with various things like anxiety, perception of pain, depression, addictions, and insomnia. It binds directly to but what's called vanilloid receptors and they are involved in pain perception as well as inflammation. CBD also antagonizes or blocks the GPR55 receptor which is another cannabinoid receptor like the CB1 and CB2 and this is involved in bone breakdown, blood pressure, it prevents cancer cells from growing or plays a role in that and it acts as an antiseptic and many other physiologic processes. It also interacts with GABA receptors which are involved in pain and anxiety. It prevents other enzymes from breaking down our body's own cannabinoids and so essentially it indirectly boosts your body's own cannabinoids. So I know that everything I just said along with that slide can be a little bit heavy and complicated and if you're anything like me you're a bit more of a visual learner so I have taken the time to create a very high-tech model to illustrate to you better for those of you that learn through pictures and that's right here. So imagine the lemon is a nerve cell and then you have a receptor on the outside of it and that's a endocannabinoid receptor like the CB1 or CB2 that we talked about. And by the way, those receptors are located throughout your entire body. The CB1 receptor is mainly found within the central nervous system such as the brain, spinal cord, things like that. And the CB2 receptor is found in the periphery. It's uh, mainly in the organs as well as the immune system and the point of it is that these receptors are found everywhere because they crosstalk again through all the systems that we mentioned. Uh, so you have these receptors and the receptor is just sitting there and just checking out the outside of the surface of the cell and when it needs to spring into action <clears throat> you have what is the cannabinoid and it is coming along and binding to the cell surface. 
And when that attaches to the receptor, it basically sends a cascade of chemical reactions within the cell to create a desired um, reaction or impulse. So throughout this video, we've sort of been touching on the function of the endocannabinoid system, but let's focus in on that a little bit more because it can be sort of a confusing topic. I know that when I first started learning about all this, or if you go online to research this, you keep hearing uh, the word homeostasis. The endocannabinoid system provides homeostasis and provides a balance. Well, what exactly does that mean and why is this important? And what this means is that within each of our systems, so I just took a few examples here, let's take the immune system or um, inflammation. If there's not a good balance, this is bad, right? If you have a weak immune system, you're able to get sick and get infections very easily. But if it's overacting, then you get things like rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel syndromes, things like lupus, psoriasis, eczema, or fibromyalgia. And then if you take the hormone or endocrine system, uh, if that's out of whack, you can get things like cancer, diabetes, thyroid issues, even fertility problems. And for the central nervous system, if that's not within balance, you get things like insomnia, migraines, seizures, anxiety, ADD, or even ADHD. So since I am a anesthesiology pain physician, let's take inflammation as an example. Inflammation is typically a good thing within your body. Inflammatory responses are due to either infection or injury, and you want to mount that response and have your body do that because it brings in all these mediators to essentially try and repair the tissue and fight the infection. So overall, it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing when it starts to overreact or um, the response is too strong and for too long. So that leads to chronic inflammation. And when that happens and all these cell mediators are occurring at that cellular level and can lead to chronic pain um, and can cause autoimmune disorders and things like that. And so what the endocannabinoid system tries to do in that scenario is basically temper down or dial down that inflammatory response. But like any other system, it can malfunction, if you will. And over time, whether due to other medications or environmental insults or just kind of physical, emotional toll, you know, all this affects um, on a chemical and cellular level the endocannabinoid system. That's why by supplementing the system, um, you can get better health outcomes and it affects uh, your health and wellness in the long term. And that concludes this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you like and subscribe so you stay up to date and know when my next videos will drop. And I hope that I have taken a rather complicated system such as the endocannabinoid system and made it a little bit simpler to understand and kind of put it all into one video. I hope I didn't make it more complicated. <laughs> um, so anyway, I hope you found it educational and as well as entertaining at the same time. So till next time, stay safe, take care, be kind, and as they would say in Costa Rica, Pura Vida.